last time. Uh-oh. What? Okay. I don't know if it's just skipping these files or what. Like, because it's giving me the error and then it's asking me to give it another disc. Well, that's no good. Okay, this is really weird. Should it be doing this? Like, this doesn't feel right. I've been sitting here for 20 minutes and it has not progressed. So, I'm going to restart it and see what happens. I think I seriously jinxed myself at the beginning of this video. God damn it. I still have no mouse movement, which is a problem. Surprise, surprise, we're back here again. Is we're gonna do a quick memory test here, because I'm really curious to know if this RAM's no good or not, so. And uh, I'm gonna run an extended self-test on the drive here and see if it brings back any errors. That's exactly what I was afraid of. Completed with read failure. Hopefully this will be um, more trouble-free than our Windows 98 install. Hello, and welcome back to what is now part two of attempting to get Windows XP installed on my IBM ThinkPad. Last time we left off, of course, at the unfortunate news that the hard drive in this machine was dead. Something I genuinely didn't know the whole time because the time that I had used it before that recording session, it had been working totally fine. Granted, that was like months, maybe even a year beforehand, so anything could have happened. But anyway, we're here. I ordered a hard drive pretty much immediately after I finished that, and $12 on eBay later, with free shipping, I have the exact same drive, Hitachi Travelstar 5K100. And before, of course, we get started with installing XP, we actually have to put it in the laptop. This, this tray is a little bit finicky, as I found out, because you actually have to open up the uh, top panel of the laptop to get this tray to slide out. So it just slides out of this uh, little caddy. I have to unscrew the faceplate from it, and then I can swap the new one in. And it comes right off. There it is right there, another travel star, basically exact same drive. Now we're going to put the new one into the caddy. All right, I got the drive all set up in its caddy here, so we can go ahead and put it right back into the laptop. All right, well, we are right back here at this very familiar by now setup for round two of attempting to get Windows XP onto this thing. And of course, our first step here that I want to do is booting from the XP installer and completely formatting the drive so we can start from scratch again. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start booting this thing up. This is an interesting error message. Hard disk drive you have installed has not been qualified for use in this computer board. Does not have the latest firmware. Using a drive that is not qualified may cause compatibility issues and potential data loss. Let's go to the BIOS really quick. I have to go there anyway. Disable it so I can disable the pre desktop area so I can completely format the drive. So what should I disable to get rid of that message, I wonder? I'm not really sure. It was very helpful on that one. During power on, look under startup in the BIOS setup utility.
Oh, continue. Shouldn't be a huge issue between it, considering it's the exact same drive. So, I asked you to stop giving me that that message. Okay, this is weird. Don't fucking beep at me. I guess while this is loading, you might be wondering why did I decide to just buy another hard drive for this machine instead of going the route lots of people probably would, which is, you know, just buying an SSD just to kind of speed it up. And while there are, I think, two chief reasons why, one is uh, the reason I touched upon in my Windows 98 video, the Beige Beast video, which is I like having stuff period correct to the computer. I am one of those kind of computer nerds that really likes having something that was set up the way it would have been when it was new or when the computer was still relevant, you know, period correct hardware, software setup. That's a big part of why I like doing time capsule machines as well is because I do kind of enjoy messing around with older software. It's kind of cool. And, and some of it is kind of nostalgic as I did grow up with a lot of Windows 98, Windows 2000 and XP computers that were just packed full of older software that was just still running on the computer when I had them as hand-me-downs. And the second reason why, honestly, it's cost, this drive, provided as long as it works, was really cheap and a good deal. It was 12 bucks on eBay with no cost for shipping. That definitely raised a couple red flags for me considering that it was significantly cheaper than the next option, which was something like 20 bucks with like an extra like 30 bucks in shipping, which is a bit ridiculous for a small hard drive, but whatever. Uh, but I mean, at least it actually was a hard drive. I was honestly kind of expecting to get a box of rocks in the mail. Oh, okay. So the drive, I guess, was already partitioned, so, or partitioned, formatted. So delete. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. Well, that's good. The drive is completely formatted. I was actually kind of wondering if there would have been anything left on the drive, but nope. Whoever sent this to me obviously is a professional and actually formatted it. So I guess we can move right on to the IBM portion of this install. Oh shit, actually, no, 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 wait, 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 I don't even want, I realized I gotta turn the pre-desktop area back on. Well, I guess I can access the BIOS from this recovery disk. I don't know why it keeps giving me that error about the hard drive, I told it to stop doing that. I don't understand why I'm unable to actually even disable that. That's kind of stupid. All right, well, we're back at this uh, very familiar screen, and I guess we're gonna go ahead and see if we can actually get a successful system restore this time. All right, well, this is a bit concerning. This is the second time this has happened so far. I'm just getting stuck at this please wait prompt. It's the same thing that was happening last time we did this. I think I'm gonna have to <laughs> uh, put Hiram's boot CD on a USB and run a test on this drive because I swear to god if they sold me a dud I'm going to be pissed alright well I'm going to run a thorough test on this drive to see if it throws back any errors at me uh, and we'll find out I guess um, if I got sold a dud or not I don't think I did but something funky is going on with this I wonder if maybe the board's just giving me issues or something like that Whatever the case, this is turning out to be a way more complicated install than I thought it would be. Okay. We've uh, just completed another test and it completed totally fine, no problems whatsoever. So I have no idea why this machine actually likes to hang that much. It's kind of concerning. It might actually just be a serious issue with the board or whatever. But we're gonna push on because damn it, I ain't gonna let this thing beat me. I have to get XP running on this thing, so. I'm gonna log out of parted magic here. I'm actually gonna take the boot disk out of the drive and hopefully it'll work because this is getting really frustrating. I mean, the disk had to be replaced anyway, but now I'm kind of wondering if some of the issues that we were facing were even related to the disk either. <clears throat> I've also been looking up ways to uh, get rid of that 
uh, hard drive warning. And apparently the only thing I can find, because I'm finding a lot of forum posts that link to a dead site that might have had a fix on it at some point, but doesn't exist anymore. But I came across random old YouTube video that basically tells me that I could just downgrade the BIOS on this to an older version and it will get rid of that issue. So I'll probably do that if I can ever actually get into Windows XP to start with. All right, well, after a few tries, I have finally gotten into the next stage of this. I don't know why it keeps getting stuck on that please wait um, prompt, but let's hope that it's just some weird fluke and it's actually going to work out well. I don't have my hopes very high, but a man can only hope. And hope's pretty much all I got at this point. Of course, continuing the tradition, I started last video, which is the very quick disc insert, so close tray, hit OK before the drive even spins up, so it gets a chance to actually just start reading all of it. The drive is being kind of weird. It's like spinning up and then slowing down again, and I don't remember it doing it this last time. Okay, it seems to be doing something now, which is good. All right, it has, uh, all right, well, it seems to have started the recovery process, so hopefully the next time I speak to you, we will be finally moving on to the next phase of this and moving on with our lives. Okay, what the hell? You cannot be serious. I put in disc two. See that? Disc two. Disc number two. It never did this before. Okay, now it magically works. Cool, yeah. Just make me stop my time lapse so I have to address this. Thanks, laptop. Entering, I think at least kind of the final phases before we get to the end of box experience with uh, Windows XP. Of course, you know, given that this all went smoothly. tantalizingly close to the out of box experience. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. <laughs> Alright, we made it here before. The real question is, can I get to the out of box experience setup without it completely locking up on me this time? That's what happened last time. Oh, I do have mouse input. Not from not from my mouse, but from the trackpad, so that's good. I didn't have that last time, by the way. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it last time, but I had no input from anything, so. At least I actually have something now, so. I guess we'll wait. Well, I was uh, away from the machine while it was stuck at the black screen actually for a good few minutes, and I was almost getting ready to restart again. 
I was kind of concerned it wasn't getting anywhere, but apparently we have got somewhere. I wasn't even recording during that, so I assume we just went straight from a black screen to this, which is not what I've seen, but it actually does seem to be doing things. I mean, the factory pre-install is actually doing stuff there, so it seems to be working anyway, so that's good. Do we have working video drivers already? I can't see. The, the mouse drivers are not working. Now there's the keyboards, so I'm assuming, yeah, waiting for plug and play to finish, so I guess we'll wait for that to do that. I guess we do have drivers going, so that's good. Oh yes, I'd also like to rectify a mistake I made last video. This specific ThinkPad does not have the uh, mobility radio on. This one actually has the uh, Intel chipset on it, which kind of sucks because it's not as powerful as the uh, radio on would be. But I think we'll do a couple benchmarks anyway with some games like early 2000s games just to kind of see how it plays them. Not that I'm planning on really using this as like a main gaming rig, but I'm just curious. Anyway, I'll be back when this is done. Hey, our mouse works, so that's good. I think we're getting ready to head into the uh, out of box experience thing here. Maybe not. Never mind. Oh wait, I guess it's just doing more stuff. <laughs> Once again, I was not really paying that much attention to the screen while I was installing all of this stuff, so it just restarted and I rushed over to uh, start the camera again. But I guess we're waiting some more. It's got lots of apps to install, apparently. Got lots of stuff to install anyway. It'd be interesting to get a sort of a a look through everything at this. Uh, computer included on it. Anyway, I'll be back again, I guess. It looks like we are finally booting into the out of box experience, I think. We'll see here in a second. We might actually hear the welcome music. I'm not usually used to that, but considering it already installed the drivers for sound, I might actually get to hear it. Normally I don't because usually I just install like XP from scratch, like from like my retail copy and usually I don't have drivers installed at that time so it's always nice when you get to hear that never mind does it just skip all of that that doesn't seem right I want to preface the reason why I keep saying we're gonna to get to the end of box experience is because all the videos I've watched you know like the two that I watched get to that where like you're basically like setting up it's not done yet <laughs> last time it restarted it got down to launching sysprep okay <laughs> I mean it definitely has more stuff on it now than it did before obviously it's at the IBM desktop background and everything so obviously it's getting somewhere oh yeah there's a lot more stuff on here now See, this, this is why I do like putting OEM versions of Windows on computers because it kind of gives them a bit of personality. Like they kind of feel unique, you know, like when you pop up a start menu here, like you can very much tell this is an IBM install. Of course, you got all your shortcuts on the desktop. You got this, you know, the access IBM and shortcut in the start menu and all the built-in IBM programs and stuff. Some people call it bloatware, you know, like nor an antivirus, I guess. I assume that's just a trial. I don't think that's a full version. I'd assume. They included WinDVD on a laptop that has a CD drive. <laughs> oh, I think we might finally be getting it after this restart. I'd say my next order of business after getting this install working is uh, downgrading the BIOS to try to get rid of that, because that's really annoying. What? Sorry, what do you want from me? Disket not in drive. Okay, I got two messages of that. Okay. 
Okay, that was weird. Oh. Oh. We got a mouse cursor. Do you hear that? All right. Thank you for purchasing this IBM Corporation. Oh, a computer from IBM Corporation featuring Microsoft Windows XP. No, I'm in Canada, thank you. Uh. Hmm. Need longer than fifteen characters, though. Um. I guess I'll do a password. Do the same password I do for everything. Oh, this actually be in I don't know if I'm gonna hook it up to the internet right now until I get it put on like a proxy or something. Yeah, I didn't think it would work. I'm actually curious if the uh, network adapter, because it does have Wi-Fi, if the uh, internet adapter is actually compatible with the uh, router I have in this house. No, there's no point in registering with IBM these days. No. Don't recall this part of the song. <laughs> the chanting. We're getting ready to head into XP. That was abrupt. Oh my god. <laughs> After <clears throat> all the time spent here, I don't I didn't think I'd ever be here. I didn't think I'd ever get to this moment where I actually am in a functioning install of XP on this laptop. It's great. It's a great moment. And <laughs> look at all this stuff clogging up the system tray already. I love it. <laughs> look at all of that. And look at this big battery indicator, like, taking up a good chunk of my taskbar. Uh, the output will only go up to... Uh, 1024 by 768, which is interesting. I wonder if that's just the limit that this this uh, display adapter puts on it. I would put to monitor. Now let's try it. Display modes. There it is, native resolution. Oh, much better. Poor battery condition? Yeah, I'm sure it is probably in poor condition. <laughs> anyway, let's take a quick browse through, I guess, what all we got on here. So yes, this laptop does feature Bluetooth capability. Uh, I don't actually, okay, can this is a go away. Um, this, uh, unfortunately, I don't have any Bluetooth devices I can really test this with. I'm trying to think. I had recently had a pair of Bluetooth earbuds die on me, but it's not very likely anything new Bluetooth is going to be compatible with this because Bluetooth protocol and how the devices communicate is very different today than it was back then. Uh, my XPSM 1330 they have, I was trying to mess around with the Bluetooth on that as well. 
and I did actually try pairing my old Skullcandy Bluetooth um, uh, earbuds with it. Like the Skullcans were really like almost brand new, and they were too new to actually work with that receiver. So I'm assuming nothing I own right now would work with this. Is that coloring unique, I wonder? Or is that just for the Bluetooth folder? That's just for the Bluetooth folder, I guess. Interesting. Oh no! It is a DVD drive. Interesting. I didn't... I was just looking at the side of it when I was installing the hard drive today, and it only says CDRW on it, so I thought it was just a CD drive, but maybe it is a DVD drive, I guess. I'll have to try out WinDVD. Nothing much is added here, except for Microsoft Interactive Training, which I don't know what that is. Select a syllabus. What is this? How to use this product. Sounds terrible. <laughs> Double click a unit and lesson title in the table of contents. Well, let's stop. Is this like a how to use your computer thing? It is. That's neat. That's now I've never seen that come with a copy of XP before. That's pretty cool. I like that. I'll never use it, but it's neat to have. What else we got? The access IBM thing. Bunch of stuff here. What, what is the actual IBM, like, thing? What is this? Hmm. Configure. Manage power. Oh, this is just, like, adjusting settings and stuff for the laptop. Okay. And you got, of course, your access to your recovery and stuff. What else is there, though? There's a bunch of other stuff in the folder. Oh, well, I should probably fill individual shortcuts to stuff that's in the Access IBM program. ThinkPad configuration. System info. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm running BIOS 1.29, and from what I've looked around to fix that hard drive error, uh, I'd have to downgrade back down to like 1.01. .01. So, we'll see about that. I might do that. What else we got? Net weighting. What is net weighting? <laughs> it's, got, it's got like a... It's got the same icon, I think, as the... Um, what the hell is that program called? Oh, it doesn't... I was going to say it almost had the same icon as the hyper terminal, but I guess not. What is this? Is this just... A phone like um, client thing. You can hook this up like through the uh, jack on the laptop, and it'll manage like incoming phone calls and stuff. Think Vantage. What is this? Software crash or virus? Do do do. Okay. Oh, it's just that again. I should have figured, considering, you know, it's the access IBM button. Interesting. Okay, what else we got? Windows Media Connect. This is all, like, stuff that I'm not that familiar with. Like, I don't really recall ever seeing much of this stuff on any, like, consumer version of Windows XP. I've, uh, like, even professional that I've ever used. Okay, well, I guess we're not trying that. Record, is that a screen recorder? Record now? Business edition. No, it's, oh, is it like a CD recorder? Interesting. 
I thought it was a screen recorder by the name of it. Jukebox CD, listen to an audio CD. Okay, interesting. Win DVD, we already know that. I'll try that out in a second. Norton Antivirus, is this a trial? Let's find out. Includes a limited time subscription to protection updates. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree to that, Norton. Okay, so you get basically like 90 days of Norton Antivirus. That's not bad. Scanning now will not protect you from these new viruses until you run live update. No. Notify me. Oh, okay, I see how it is. I'm not allowed to say no. Stop scan. Urgent attention. <laughs> well, it actually, uh, yeah, I guess that would make sense. Version 2005 has last updated virus definitions uh, May 4th, 2005. May the 4th be with you. PC Doctor. What is this? It sounds familiar. I think I've used this before. Yeah, this is just a troubleshooting program, I think, isn't it? Maybe? Yep. Just troubleshooting. And Express Labeler. This drive doesn't have, like, a labeling thing, does it? Oh, I see. This is, like, printable labels. <laughs> I thought it was, like, LightScribe technology. I was like, what? Don't think this thing would have had that. And of course, got the classics. Got Adobe Reader and more Java stuff. And, of course, we have Internet Explorer 5. And what is this? Probably, yep, Media Player 10. That's what I thought. The classic XP sample music. I think XP is probably more responsible for the relevancy of Beethoven in the 21st century than anything else. I don't know about you, but whenever I hear this in like a movie or something, the only thing I think of is... The only thing I think of is just being bored in a fresh install of XP and needing background noise. That's what I listen to. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna go get a DVD and I guess maybe even just an audio CD and we'll do a couple playback tests, I guess. All right, I got my 2001 special edition copy of The Terminator, which is usually my go-to tester DVD. So we'll pop it in. No, I don't want the PC-friendly player. I want to use WinDVD. Where's full screen? Oh. Oh, I take you full screen. I got for options here: subtitle, audio. Can I change the auto track on the fly? Oh no, it just brings me to this menu. What is OSD? On screen something? Pan and scan. It looks like I'm watching a copy that was transferred to VHS.
All right. Something I just noticed. Didn't actually include like a copy of Office or anything with this. I think at least. That's interesting. I think like, a business oriented laptop would include that, but apparently not. So I guess I gotta source my own copy of Office 2003. Oh yes, we should, uh, I actually am kind of curious. It's a bit risky, of course. Is this Service Pack 2 we're running here, I assume? Yeah. I'll keep it that because, you know, time capsule machine and all that. So I plan to just make this like a 2005 kind of themed machine. But I want to see if it'll even connect to our network because I don't think XP... Yeah, that's exactly what I thought would happen. <laughs> okay, so this thing basically can't do it wirelessly anymore not with just the standard uh, XP client I might be able to do it with like a third-party Intel one but not with XP's does Intel provide their own this install it's happened a couple times before Intel but uh, now I don't see it I guess I just expect you to use the uh, built-in XP client. So, that's not going to work, unfortunately. I'm just going to hook up to one of my bell pods, I guess. Or figure something else out, I don't know. <laughs> not that this thing was really going to be that used on the internet anyway, considering I was planning on keeping it at Service Pack 2 like it is right now. And, uh, I mean, I was going to also put it on, uh, you know, one of those... Where, um, old net proxy setups as well so it's not like it was going to be doing that much useful on the internet anyway but whatever what version of DirectX are we running here I assume like 9b I don't think they would have had 9c in 2005 if I remember right no we're running 9c never mind so we're running like one of the latest versions of DirectX 9 and so speaking of DirectX 9, I guess that should bring us over to some gaming benchmarks because I actually am, even though this machine is clearly going to be pretty inept at running anything, I'm kind of curious to know what kind of performance I can get out of some games. After all, of course, we are running the mobile uh, Intel uh, Express chipset uh, graphics, which are not spectacular by any means. They're very much um, really only intended for like regular PC use, not really intended for any kind of heavy 3D rendering. They're not really intended for that, but that's not going to stop me from trying to do some gaming. So I'll be back with a couple benchmarks I want to try. Yeah, unfortunately I wasn't able to actually get an older version of the BIOS to install on this laptop, so I guess I'm just going to have to live with these two annoying beeps every single time I turn the laptop on. Okay, well, it is the next day, as you can clearly see. I spent the rest of last night basically getting everything else I want installed on here, and so I stuck a copy of Office 2003 on here, I stuck uh, Photoshop Elements 4 and Premiere 2.0 on here. 
Not that I plan to do any kind of real video or photo editing on this thing, but I figured it'd just be some stuff that would fit in with the rest of the programs on here. And that's really all I stuck on here for the most part. Aside from just a couple other kind of fun novelty stuff on here, I stuck AIM and MSN on here as well as a very, very old version of uTorrent just for the funnies. But that's pretty much all I really stuck on here. I actually didn't end up putting a whole lot on here. But now that we're here, uh, we can move on to the section that I've kind of been curious about benchmarking some games. And as you can see, I have four to choose from here. Now, the only one that I've actually played as of yet, because this is going to be a live reaction to all of these, the only one that I actually have played and tested was Half-Life 2. I downloaded um, an archived version of the day one release of Half-Life 2, the version, like, what is it? It's version build 2187, I guess. It's from the retail release, version basically 1.0 release of Half-Life 2. Uh, and believe it or not, this card actually did not even meet my expectations for how this card would play it. It played it actually a lot worse than I thought this would. It's not a huge surprise, um, but it played a lot worse than I thought it was going to. But without further ado, since I've already been talking about it, we might as well start Half-Life 2 so I can give you guys an actual benchmark here. Alright, so here is Half-Life 2. Let me bring up the uh, FPS counter here. Yeah, it's not fantastic. Now, I have this game on the absolute bare minimum settings. Like, we're talking like OG Xbox port, like, quality here. 480p, nothing is enabled here. Um, so, it's running at the absolute bare minimum. And as you can clearly tell, it's also running on DirectX 8 by this, uh, the water particles. Very easy to tell there. But, uh... The, this game does not run particularly well, which was kind of a shock to me. I mean, Half-Life 2 is a pretty well-optimized game. Uh, it can run on a potato, uh, and believe me, I've run it on some potatoes before. Uh, a lot of my old hand-me-down computers used to be pretty bad, but uh, this card takes the cake as far as uh, incompetence goes. So why don't I just go ahead and load up Root Canal and show you exactly how long this game will continue running for. Because it's not very long. All right, here we are at the start of Root Canal. And you see, the FPS is good here, obviously. There's not really a whole lot, but of course, it's going to tank real soon. All right, now, here comes the FPS drop. <laughs> Perhaps the absolute worst Half-Life 2 experience I have ever had. And <laughs> there it went. It's done. It ran out of uh, memory. Yep, and that's exactly what happens right there. It, uh... Throws up a failed instruction error, which usually means you've run out of available memory. Um, and that's exactly what happened. So, yeah. There went Half-Life 2. And because of Half-Life 2's benchmark, that kind of got me wondering a little bit. I mean, it was something I wanted to do anyway, but it kind of got me wondering. What about Far Cry? I mean, Half-Life 2 is a pretty good benchmark because... It's a generally well-optimized game. It kind of gives you a good idea of how good a computer can handle 3D rendering. But Far Cry is a really good test of how powerful a computer is. I can remember a lot of hand-me-down machines that I've had that honestly struggled with Far Cry because of internal graphics cards. And I'm honestly really curious to know if Far Cry will actually even play at all on this machine. And so, without further ado, I guess, we might as well go ahead and and find out just how horrible Far Cry runs on this machine. So I can guarantee you, it's probably awful.
Okay, I guess we actually get to preset our settings. That's actually pretty good. I can preemptively put it down to the lowest possible settings. Really? That's as far down as it'll go. It won't even go down to 480? That's weird. Okay, it's very good that um, this machine, or this uh, setup can automatically detect this computer. I obviously can't run this game barely at all. Let's give it a shot. Uh Okay. <laughs> I see that this resolution apparently means What? <laughs> okay, this resolution renders sideways. Is there a um Shouldn't there be like a keyboard shortcut to fix this or am I just gonna have to exit and <laughs> Imagine playing Far Cry like this, like on a monitor of this orientation or of this aspect ratio. Okay, I need to change this. There we go, that's better. Hey, you know what? This background, I believe, is being rendered in real time, if I'm remembering right. It's not running... No, I think this is all pre-rendered, actually. I can kind of see some artifacting. So, I'm not sure. But, let's try. Okay, you know what? It's not too bad looking... Okay, well, actually, textures are kind of uh, problematic. The floor is missing. Oh no, it's water. Sorry, it's water. It looked literally just like white from the top. It's actually not too bad looking yet. I've gotta find a way out of here. I've gotta find a way out of here. Oh, I can already tell the FPS is kind of tanking a little bit. That just looks lovely. Are we in the sky? <laughs> that looks terrible. I can see where it's starting to fall apart a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is probably the worst I've ever seen this game. The FPS has not like become awful yet, but I mean, the visuals have definitely taken a bit of a hit. Hey, the enemy is really easy to spot. Oh my god, it looks awful! <laughs> I can't... I actually don't <coughs> remember where to go. Survey my surroundings. How do I bring up the binoculars? Oh, B. That makes sense. Oh, no. Here come. Oh, there went all the FPS. <laughs> Uh-oh. Let's haul ass over there. I'd like to see single-digit FPS. I don't even think we really need an FPS counter to realize how broken this is. Oh, the okay, apparently there's water there. I actually can't tell where the water ends and the land begins. Oops. Well, oh, that just gave me away. I want to get to a vehicle driving section. Okay, I need to get out of here. I'm going to drive away. Not that I know where I'm going anyway. <laughs> I, I can't tell where I'm going. Uh oh. <laughs> this is so so. Okay, well I'm in the water now.
Well, I think that's enough Far Cry. I'm pretty sure that um, very clearly demonstrates how it does not run on this machine. Well, after Far Cry and Half-Life 2, I figure I should probably give this machine something that might be a little bit easier to run on this graphics card. And so I figure we should go a couple years older with 2001's Max Payne, one of my personal favorites for benchmarking older machines. I'm actually kind of curious to know how well this machine will run that. I mean, I can understand Far Cry and Half-Life 2, but I am kind of curious to know how this graphics chip might handle how Max Payne. How Max Payne? Ah, okay. Now, just to be on the safe side, let's once again bump everything down to the minimum. Down, down. I don't think I've ever actually put Max Payne down this low on settings before. The game's already not, like, that stellar looking to begin with. I mean, of course it's from 2001, but still. I'm actually kind of curious to know what it's going to look like, like this. Okay, we're getting like stable FPS here at least. Well, at least Max is looking great as ever. Michelle, honey, anybody home? I didn't like the way the show started. They've given me the best seat in the house, front row center. And that laptop speaker really does not sound great. What the hell? Something ugly had been tattooed on the wall. Is this the pain residency? I'll skip that. I don't need to answer no phone. Green seems a little bit dark. No, 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 God, no, please, oh, baby. <laughs> just gotta make sure, you know, just gotta put them out of their suffering. Okay, save here. Yeah, like, we're getting pretty good FPS, honestly. I love the voice acting in Max Payne. Okay, I'm going to bump up the settings now to 800 by 600 and we'll bump all this up to high because I'm kind of curious to know. Okay, we definitely have a bit of a loss in frames now. It's not terrible though, like I wouldn't call it unplayable.
Yeah, you know what? It's it's not too bad. to get hydrated. I'd say that's about enough Max Payne. Um, surprisingly, does not run too badly, actually. I mean, it's still not, like, great by any means. But, I mean, if I was a businessman on the go in 2005 and I wanted to play some Max Payne on the go, I'd call that pretty reasonable. And finally, to finish off this benchmarking segment, we're going to be taking a look at another game from 2001, Grand Theft Auto 3. I was going to go for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, but I figured I'd go over something a little bit more lightweight and easier to run just to see how well this machine would actually handle it. Oh good, it's already running like lowest it can. Turn off trails. And, you know, turn off these two as well. I want to know just how well it will run unrestricted. Oh, wow, actually, pretty surprisingly smooth. Also really loud. You know what, this actually is not running. You know what, this is actually not running particularly bad. I didn't really think it would run too badly, but I was at least kind of expecting a dip into like the lower like 20 FPS, but this is definitely, oh. Okay, well we have some issues going on with uh, render distance, clearly. <laughs> oh, some objects not spawning. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we have some real render distance problems. <laughs> yeah, render issues, like render distance issues aside, it's not running terribly. Like it's certainly very playable. But, oh my god, did they ever take a long time for it to catch up. Hurry it up.
I know I get the Banshee. Oh no. <laughs> the world. I can see through it. Oh god. <laughs> the Billy hasn't even spawned yet. And the cart hasn't. What? That's the first time that's ever happened to me. Okay, let's go get the Mafia Sentinel, uh, Sentinel I guess. Trying to get a police chase started here. <laughs> Whoa. That whole building was gone. There's a hole in the world. Woo. Well, that went well. Oh, God, there's a cop right there. Ah. Get out of here. I'm going to try to uh, make the jump over to uh, Staunton. Is that what they call it in GTA 3? I can't remember. Well, that plane is... Ooh, that plane's risky up there. Whoa, no! Oh, that went well. <laughs> Oops. All right, let's do this. Let's try this again. <laughs> All right, let's let's attempt this. Okay. No! Oh, now I'm stuck here. Oh, there's my car. Well, I guess this is just where Claude's going to have to spend the rest of his life. And well, that's pretty much going to have to do it for this video. Finally, we got XP installed on the IBM ThinkPad. I got the programs I wanted on. And we've been running some hilarious benchmarks. I'd call that a pretty good success, actually. I'm pretty satisfied that I finally got the factory IBM install of Windows XP working on this thing. And I'm not really sure what else I'm actually going to be doing with this machine. I actually have had thoughts of doing a proper restoration, you know, replacing the LCD panel, fixing the trackpad button, replacing the track point nub on the keyboard, um, maybe actually getting a more period correct mouse because this is a slightly later era IBM. I'm kind of looking to try to find one with the matching multicolored IBM uh, logo on it. Uh, preferably actually a PS2 mouse as well so it doesn't have to take up a USB port on the laptop. But yeah, other than that, I thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit that like button and be sure to hit that bell because I'm sure there's definitely more to come out of this channel in the future. Anyways, that's all for now. See you later.